Well, good morning. I'm back at my house today teaching. I'll tell you, this COVID thing has got all of us all over the place. Uh, things are look different every week. We're having to adjust as we go along, and that's not always fun or definitely not comfortable. Uh, we're recording this message this morning, but later on, actually this afternoon, we are going to do a live service under our pavilion about 2 o'clock, give it time to warm up tomorrow. And so we're adjusting, and we've got God's provided us the ability to do that. And so last week we were in the service, but because of an active case, we, we were doing things a little different today. But uh, <clears throat> I felt led to go back to the hymns that I've been doing. I've done some over the summer and just sit out on the porch. But today I'm going to do something a little different, really be out of my comfort zone. And that's kind of try to accompany myself with, on the piano. And I just don't ever let anybody hear me play because I'm just a novice at it. I just know some chords. And you can't be raised in the house with a mother that's a piano player and her not teach you something, even though I didn't pursue that too much. But it's this piano is set here in my house uh, for many years, back since we, we came here before we bought this house. So it's set here now. It actually went through the fire. It survived the fire. So it's precious to me. Uh, my daughters have grown up beating on this piano, and so are my granddaughters now, and they're amazing. But one thing I've used this for is uh, when I'm... Uh, I don't know when to say stress, but it's something I can sit down and hit a few chords. And anybody that's music, a musician knows how therapeutic music can be. <clears throat> but not just the music, but the songs. And I've been singing hymns, and people love them. And I did these, I'm going to do a couple songs that I did recently in a memorial service. Precious, precious man of God. Served God many years, and he was actually a professional piano player. He was amazing. They played some of his stuff at his own memorial service, you know. I won't be playing for mine, but he played for his, and that was pretty awesome. But these songs, the first one says, Until Then. It's an old hymn, and I'd forgotten how much I loved this song. And uh, the other one is What a Day That'll Be, which I usually sing with my mom and my cousin, uh, Mary Faye. Uh, but uh, we've done it at many services. But was I, as I went back, and these songs are not just about leaving this earth, which was about the memorial service, of course, but I believe they're very fitting for where we are. Because we're going to new levels. We're going to places we've never been. America's in a place it's never been before. And uh, so what do you do in the meantime? What do you do when things don't look like you think they're supposed to look? Um, what if what you think was a wheat end up being a tear? And I'm going to teach on that today. What if something that looks really good, how do you feel when all of a sudden it's not good? And what you thought was the right thing or what you thought was going to happen, who you thought was going to win, what job you thought you was going to get, the marriage that you thought was going to work out. These kind of things that happen in our life right now, and it's very uncertain, but you got to make up your mind. As the, uh, the serenity prayer talks about that, that, you know, you just, you're just you going to learn how to, what you can accept. you got to accept what you can't change and the wisdom to know the difference. What can I change? What can I not change? And what I can usually change is my attitude. What I can change is how I take things. I cannot change what happens in our government. I cannot change right now. I have no power over COVID. I only have power of how I handle it, what I do with it, whether I wear a mask, I don't wear a mask, whether I go out, whether I don't. Wear. That's up to me. We're, we're, we're grown people here. We make our own choices. But there's some things that I can change. And this song talks about a changing of the attitude, a changing of what, it's a decision of how I'm going to handle things. And so, um, I'll probably miss some chords and I miss some notes because I definitely don't play and sing, <clears throat> especially with allergies. Uh, every time I get a cough or something, I think, oh, I got the COVID. But uh, <clears throat> I'm trusting I don't, that this is just allergies today. <clears throat> oh, I love this old song. I wish John was here to play for me. My heart can sing when I pause to remember. Oh, oh. 
what a day, glorious day. think about going through whatever it is. We're going through some tough times now, but we're going to go through the promises. And in that place, we're going to see Brother William Cunningham. I never got to know him, but he, he's just like my dad and what I hear of him. I want that to be said of me because of my memorial service, that I kept the faith. As Paul said, you know what? My my race is run. He goes, it's it's there. I'm also, he goes, I've I've finished the course. I kept the faith. The whole the whole issue is can you keep the faith with what you're going through today? Can you keep the faith? This isn't for nothing. We're not doing this for nothing. There's great benefits of being in the kingdom today. I hope you enjoyed these old hymns and I'm hoping there's some more to come. Well, praise the Lord. It is good to be back with you today. And you that's been following along with our messages, um, know I've been speaking about the fire for some time. And I uh, was in a conversation with a very dear brother in our church that is literally, I mean, if you want to call it a fire, he's in a personal fire right now. Battling, going through uh, stage four cancer and right in the middle of treatment. And you guys that's been down this, that, that road of cancer and, and all those things, you know this is a, it's truly, it's truly a time of, of, of testing of, of it, it's a time that you've got to decide what you know and what you believe and what you're going to stand on, be able to just keep, keep your mind. And so um, I'm watching this. And one thing I've learned is that there's great wisdom. There's great wisdom, great light that comes out of fire and comes out of somebody else's fire. And I've preached that here lately, that our fire can be somebody else's light. And so if you're wise, you will listen to these people. I'm telling you, if you want to have some uh, uh, continue education, <laughs> just spend a little time on the phone or visiting with Brother Jimmy Rains, that's a part of our family. And I was privileged to do that. And then this conversation, um, he told me that something had jumped out in my message last week. Last Sunday, um, it was in interesting because we was we were we moved back into the building, the sanctuary, and uh, it, it felt so good. It was just it was precious to be in there and and to to have what what is our comfort zone really, what we know to be church in a way, a little different than outside in the pavilion, as good as that's been, but. Uh, he said, well, you, you said something, and because I was teaching about prescribed fires, prescribed fires. 
and we know what that is. Those are fires that have been set for a purpose, and, and many times, I don't know what I say here, it's also called a controlled burn. It's when they go in there and it meets a management objective. There's a reason to have a fire. It says, um, uh, by ridding the forest, it talks about, this is for, oh, here it says it. It's a fire intentionally set for purposes of forest and farming management. And so uh, I went into more detail about the forest, right? How it, it rids the forest of leaves and uh, dead limbs and debris uh, that can come in and add to a destructive wildfire. And because it's just got a lot of stuff that needs to get cleaned out. And we know that's been on the news about the California fire. They were blaming uh, the government of, Le of, of California for not spending the money to do prescribed fires ahead of time, cleaning up cleaning up, taking the time to go out there and burn off the bag, clean up the, because if not, the least little spark, you got a whole bunch of dead stuff, a whole bunch of degree, debris, the least little spark can all of a sudden spark it, and then you've got thousands of acres burning like they did, and that's not, that's not the kind of fire that God is a, 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 a part of, but there are things, all fire uh, comes from something, and it has purpose um, when put in the hands of the Lord. Even the things we start, he will come in and deliver us and praise God for that. Because <laughs> we all can start our own forest fires. That means something started that you didn't mean to start that and it just got away from you. I mean, you had relationships, situations, money stuff, all kind of stuff that started um, uh, by something that you were not doing right. Like somebody that starts a forest fire, they didn't they didn't put out their, their campfire good. They threw a cigarette out or, you know, those kind of things normally is what starts a forest fire. There is some that's caused by lightning. But the truth is, it's so many things, it's caused from something negative. So what I want to talk about, though, today is not what happens in forests, but the other part of that that I said it also is for farm farming. Well, Brother Jimmy is a farmer. He's been a farmer many years. And he, right in the middle of this cancer, he went and sowed, I think, 40 acres or something like last week. I'm like, good grief. This man's out here still doing this. Uh, at his age, and even going through the, the, the treatment right now. But um, he said, Sister, he goes, before we had things, that modern farming, and we had things like pesticides and things like that, he said that after we would harvest, get our harvest in, he said we would burn our fields to remove the tares. We would burn our fields to remove the tares. In other words, we had a controlled burn. We had a prescribed fire because we had a purpose. Like I said last week, there's purposes for uh, for burning in a forest. That Those kind of controlled fires, they're low heat. They don't destroy the trees, but they destroy the pesticide, the pest, the diseases, uh, the debris that can that hinders the growth and, uh, and, and also causes the ground to get hard enough that some seeds that are dormant, they, they come alive. And so... Uh, they germinate. Well, he said, we burn our fields to remove tares. I'm like, oh my goodness. Wow. Well, I looked up, uh, I just looked a definition up of tares I thought I knew, and, and, and there's and there's probably others, but the first definition that jumped up at me, I just Googled tear, and it said an injurious weed resembling wheat when young. And it refers to the story in the Bible. An injurious weed resembling wheat when young. Well, we're going to go and read that parable, and I want to talk about burning our fields. I want to talk about when God can set my field on fire. Ooh, hallelujah. Uh, we're going to start in Matthew, the 13th chapter of Matthew, and there's so much in this chapter about seed and ground and all of these things. In fact, up here in the beginning part, um, he talks about over here, I think in like the 13th, uh, well, somewhere up, up above there in the first part of this chapter 13, he talks about what we call the four, the, the parable of the seed, but it's not the parable of the seed. It's the parable of the ground, it's four kinds of ground, one kind of seed, one sower. And so we're going to talk later about the preparation of the ground, which brother Jimmy also brought some insight to that. We talked about that, but I want to talk about this, this, it's like the second or third parable in here, really about seeds and about fields. It's, it's a very interesting chapter, and, and it's got a lot to it. And I was going to say this. Um, 
later after I'd talked to him, I just, I mean, I was just set on fire about this and going, oh my goodness, uh, you're removing tares. You're removing tares. You're injurious seeds. And we know the word seed in the Bible is always about the word. It's the word. The word was God. The word was with God. He spoke the word and the word, you know, the worlds began. The word became flesh. All these things that happened, the seed in the, from the Genesis, from Genesis, he said everything runs in this world on, on, on the seed time and harvest, right? Everything multiplies after its seed. Everything multiplies. So if you got a good a wheat, reproduces wheat. Tares, weeds, reproduce weeds. Cows, reproduce cows. Uh, people, reproduce people. Um, all those different areas, everything from the plants to animals and humans, everything is after seed. It comes in, there's a seed, there's a good seed and there's a bad seed is what we're going to discover here. But, uh, I was thinking about all this and I, I went upstairs and I was taking a shower and for some reason God speaks to me in showers and I don't know if he does you, but uh, I was thinking about this and I thought, you know, you've been speaking about fire now for several weeks. I thought you were going to move on, but I immediately knew in my spirit. Uh, he didn't really like speaking, but I knew I had a knowing in my, in my inner man. It's like, when you hear from God, that's not something you move on quickly. When you really get a word, a prophetic word, there's a lot of words we get, a lot of thoughts we get, a lot of things. But when you hear that, you go, that is a word from the throne. You just know it is. It's a true prophetic word. It's something you don't forget. It's not just a little sermon. As far as a minister, it can't be just a sermon. Um, What's happening with me, what we call people call sermons, to me it's it's a process that's been happening. I'll get we'll get his prophetic word and many times through Pastor Gary, and it goes there and it builds. It builds, it builds. It's building and stripping. It's like an onion that peels off, it's peeling off the, the 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 things that's hiding the truth, it's building off the bad, and it's revealing the seed. It goes all the way down to the seed. You can peel apple. I just ate an apple a while ago. And at that at the core of that is the seed. And so uh and so anyway, but I, I was I was thinking about these words and I thought, you know, um you don't move a past it. And Gary had said lately a really prophetic word, and all of a sudden he said he heard that voice in his mind, his spirit say, I'm removing the dross from my people. Y'all remember that? I'm removing my dross from my people. Well, I know that's to tell us where we are. January of the 2020, he heard the Lord say, uh, you're going to expand, not expand. Expand, not expand. In other words, there's going to be some growth, but we're not going to do anything more. We're not going to have to invest in it. It's, we're just going to start expanding. And it's like, uh, uh, while we're resting in the Lord, he, we're just going to be expanding. It's multiplication. Well, how many of y'all that I spoke to and we've, we've taught about it, it comes up all the time, not just from me, but the people in the church, the people in our little flock has received that seed and it's multiplied and it's helped us. And we see even through COVID, having less things to do, the truth is this seed has multiplied. I never sat in my house and did what I'm doing now. You probably never even, may not even heard of me. You definitely didn't tune in and listen to anything that's been said at Little Christian Gathering in Valley View, Texas. You maybe never went to ChristianGatheringChurch.com and, and listened to messages or subscribed to our uh, YouTube channel. But now there's all kinds of people doing this. We have truly expanded without expending. And so that now he has said, there's been other words, but this one was specific lately. He said, I'm removing the dross from my people. So I've been talking about the fire, how it purifies what? It purifies gold. It pur purifies us. It takes away unbelief. It takes away um, all these different, the things that bind us. Uh, we've been teaching on that. Well, then he took me into this thing about a prescribed fire because I understood something as we were talking about the fire purifying people's gold. I realized that the, the, the prophets had prophesied over and over and talked about Israel being put in the furnace of fire. And it was referring to went 400 years of being in slavery and oppression um, under Egyptian rule. And that was a furnace. He let them go into it. And it was prophesied many years before to uh, Abraham when he set up the covenant with these people. He said, there's going to be a time, I'm telling you, a prof prophetic word. That's why it's important. So they could go, this is what's happened. Don't you remember? Hey, great, great granddaddy. Abraham, he told him there was his people, his seed would become like the sand of the seed. But he said he's going to go into the furnace to make it happen. 
He said, you're going to go in that furnace with 70 souls. It went in a family of 70 and it come out a nation. They say like a million and a half people. It's multiplication. It's when the fire in the forest multiplies the dormant seed. It's like what's happening right now. There's a multiplication happening. To, to happen, there has to be a removal of the bad. You're going to have to remove the bad seed to get to the good seed. You're going to have to watch those tears that's in your field so they don't choke out the good seed that makes you fruitful. Well, we I just referred to the story. We're going to talk about it later, maybe not today, about those four kinds of fields. And the good in the last field, there was the stony, I mean the hard field. There was a stony field, and these are hearts. And then there was a heart that received the word and became fruitful, looked really good for a minute. I don't know how long that was, but it became fruitful. But it, it, there was thorns still in the soil. It said it had been sowed among so, thorns. And in those thorns, they grew up. And they, it said they, 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 come, they become, they choke out. They choked out the good. The tares choked out the wheat. And it became unfruitful. And it told us what those tares was. It tells us what those thorns were. And that point, it said it was what? The deceitfulness of riches and the cares of life. It's just getting too involved in this realm. It's when all of a sudden you're getting the mindset of this world, which is materialism. It's that dog eat dogs. I've got to do this. I've got to get this. I've got to gain this. And if I just have a better house, then we'll be happy. If I get a bigger car, if I get a car that just runs, I'll be happy. If I can just pay my bills, I get happy. If I can just get married, I'll be happy. If I can just uh, lose weight, I can be happy. If I can just, if I can just, if I can just, and we get our mindset in this world and it all of a sudden it chokes out. It's, 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 it's the deceitfulness of materialism and it's also just the cares of this world where we put everything else in this life above the spiritual life. And before we know it, it didn't say the tree died, didn't say they just, be, no, it just said it become unfruitful. What's the fruit? The fruit of the spirit, the peace, the joy, the love, the goodness, the things that we look for, the mercy, the, the be able to have temperance, which is that to be even keyed and not all over the crazy place and in anger with ill temper. And I have fits of rage and all these things he said are their products. What their products is the products of tears. You can see, you can see what fathered that. What fathers those things is the Bible says that Satan is a father of lies. It's a lie. What did I say a seed is? It's a word. A wheat can be equal to the truth. It's the word of God. A tear is equal to a lie. It's the word of the adversary. And you know this. It ain't all about some, some devil with a hor horns. Oh my goodness, we got to understand that. I'm just going to throw this in there. The word Satan wouldn't even capitalized until not that long ago. The word just means adversary or accuser of the brother. He's that adversary. Sometimes it's an evil spirit, but many times the adversaries is the lies in my own head that's choking out the good word. When God, when Jesus turned around, and looked at uh, 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 Peter and said, get behind me, Satan. It wasn't, he was he calling Satan really Peter? Was he calling Peter Satan? No, that's a little S right there. What he was calling him, he said, you are, uh, he goes, he, goes, he explains it, he goes, you don't know what you're saying here. He said, you're not savoring the things of God. In other words, you're not focusing, you're not enjoying, you're not looking for the things of God. He said, you're looking at things of, of, of this world. Because he just told him, I, I'm going to go to Jerusalem and die because I'm, I've got something to do here. And Peter said, oh no, you can't do that. He's like, you're an offense to me. Get behind me. Was he caught? No, he was saying the words you're speaking is an offense. It's trying to cause me a stumbling block. I need you saying, come on, brother, you can do it. Come on, we'll walk with you. We'll go with you. Yes, you've already told us you're going to go to the cross because you've got a purpose. But instead, he's all worried about himself because Peter wants what? He's still in a carnal mind thinking that Jesus was going to be the Messiah like Moses was and take them out of the fiery furnace of Egypt. He thinks you're going to take them out of the fiery furnace of the Roman oppression that they were under. He was all about this world. He was still sowing, reaping from the wrong seed, the wrong thought in his head. The thought that Satan had put in him. The lie that had been put in him by the adversary. And so this is where the tears come from. This is the lie. And Jesus himself said, get behind me. That, that, you don't know what world. You don't know what. Another place he told his disciples, you don't know what spirit you're of. 
What, what do you mean call fire down from heaven? You, you're, uh, you, you're still missing it. You're still missing it. How many of us are still missing it? Well, this is why you set your fields on fire. Because there are terrors, lies, and oh my gosh, I'm going to go ahead and read this. I'm going to read this story right here to you. Uh, and this parable. And then we can maybe talk a little bit more about it. The more I've studied this, the more exciting. And, and thank you, for, Brother Jimmy, for setting my fields on fire. And to let me know that, and, and the Lord let me know that when you get a word, you don't leave it. You don't leave it. We're going to stay with this. I don't know how long. 2018, January 1st, the Lord said, this is the year of the king. And he let me know it was going to be a notable year. Something to remember. And I, I, I didn't know if it was going to be good or bad. I just knew it was going to be a notable year. And um, I said, okay, Lord, if, you're, if this is you're the king, then I don't have to be. And that word carried me. I did not know that was January 1st. I didn't know that two weeks later on January 15th, suicide would enter our family, change our world. Uh, 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 the, uh, the little Layla would be diagnosed, a little four-year-old, my, my brother's little granddaughter. Four-year-old diagnosed with an inoperable brain tumor. I didn't know that another sister that would go through divorce after 25 years of marriage, a terrible situation. Y'all know divorce is like death. Y'all know that. There's honor in being a widow, but there's not a whole lot of honor when, when your marriage has fell apart. It's a terrible thing, especially in the church or in the ministry, and, and people don't understand it. These are fires, aren't they? And then before the end of the year, my own husband would be diagnosed with a terrible, horrible uh, a disease. And I'm not even really, don't even like to say it because I'm still not, uh, I'm not that, well, let me say this. Faith, uh, faith doesn't deny facts. Faith changes. And I'm still looking at faith, uh, changing and seeing those things. But he was diagnosed with early onset Alzheimer's. That he went to leave the, the job he loved, being an engineer for the, for the railroad all these years. And you know what? That was one year. But we had a prophetic word. I didn't have to be king. And I, you go back and read my, listen to my messages 2018. I preached the whole year on the, on the, about the kingdom. Uh, the whole year on the kingdom. If I had to preach now till Jesus comes back about what he's talking about, about the tares, because it's a, this is one of the biggest things you'll ever learn. If there's two seeds in the world, there's only two seeds. There's only two from the beginning. It's the truth and the lie. That's what was in the garden. It was the truth and the lie. The two voices. All Satan was, was the voice of choice. That's all he was. God created him with all everything else. And you could not be like God and have and not have choice. You couldn't be like God and have dominion. That you couldn't make decisions on your own or you'd be less than him. You wouldn't be in his image. To be in his image, you got to conversate with him. You got to have abilities to have a true relationship. And that's what he wanted. The whole thing is have a relationship with his creation, his children. That's what it's all about. But you see in the garden, the two, the two trees, the tree of life. And the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And then you have to decide. And now you have to go by your conscience. And that's where we are today. This is why it's so important to understand that's the battleground. The battleground is the field here in my head. The field is the truth and the lie. That's why that's a stronghold. The only thing the devil can do is create strongholds by planting lies. And if you believe it as a little child and you, somebody tells you that you're just not going to mount a hill of beans... Or your daddy don't love you, or you never was wanted, or, or you're too fat, or your ears are too big, or you hear somebody talking uh, about you, whether it's about whatever it is that starts instilling you a uh, identity, a lie about who you are. And the rest of our life, it's like peeling back the onion to go, who am I? Who I am I? And I've been saying this. He brings us down. He brings, he's trying to bring us to pure gold. He's trying to bring us to a wheat field that's full of wheat that can be productive, that can bring forth the bread of life for this world. I'm not very productive when I'm fighting my own thorns and thistles all the time. He's trying to do us a favor, guys. Fire is a good thing. Everything I'm reading about fire is a good thing. And we've made it evil. We've made it like about the devil and some big thing. It's pass or fail, go to hell. I'm telling you, we missed the whole picture of what fire is. Fire is a good thing. Fire is what brings light. It was the only light in the in the whole Bible was the sun and a in a candle or a flame. It was fire. Fire is a good thing. Fire is a light. And when Brother Jimmy said to me, at the end of our harvest, in this at the end of season, we would burn our fields to remove the tares. God is moving, He is burning our fields. Now I'm gonna read this parable, but you gotta understand something about the Bible that I did not know for a long time. It's it's I kind of knew it, but I've really realized so much. 
that it's written in layers and you can understand, you can look at the physical, you're looking at the, in the spiritual, you can look at this. Uh, and sometimes it's allegory. Sometimes it's, well, first of all, he said, look back at the old because it was a shadow or a, a top and shadow of the good things to come. When we look at the old covenant, we see natural things. It was just pictures to bring us into the spiritual covenant that you and I are getting to have today. So when you read the gospels, when you read the words in red, when you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, it's still under the law. It's still under the first covenant until the cross. And then he opened up the New Testament or the new thing. And then he came back on Pentecost and filled the world with his spirit. And then he became a new world or a new, a new covenant. But he's speaking at this point. Jesus was come to wrap up the old is what he did. And he said, he said a parable in here. He said, it's like a guy with a vineyard. Uh, he has a farm. This is another one of those seed pictures. But he had, he had, uh, he had a good vineyard. And then he had people taking care of it, right? He had hired some people. He had instructed some people, which at that point he's actually talking about the Jewish leaders that were supposed to be taking care of the sheep, taking care of God's people of the of the of the old covenant, the, the Hebrew children, the Jews. And he said, "But I sent my prophets to tell them." I, I, t I, one after another, I said, I need to gather you in. I need to gather you in. I'm fixing to start something new. I need some seed in my barn because I've got a new field I'm fixing to do. There's a new thing coming. I've been prophesying it for years. There was going to be a, a new thing was going to happen. But he said, you have not taken care of it. And he said, you, so anyway, he, he just sent them in to take it. And one after another, he kept, and they would, they would stone them. They would kill them. And, and they abused, which was representing, he said, those were the prophets that I sent you. But you didn't heed to them, Israel. No, you didn't heed to him. He said, in fact, you just killed him. He says, but the, the man said in the parable, he said, well, I'll send my son. Surely they'll hear him. He says, so he sent the son and what happened? No, they killed the son too. And that was Jesus talking straight to the people that were fixing to kill him. He was talking to that, that crowd right there and he told, he told his apostles, this is, this is what's happening. He was explaining things to them and he, he said, um, he said, you are of your father, the devil. You are over here. You don't even know. And he said, he said, Israel, you've become like dross to me. He said, I'm fixing to purge you and I'm going to bring out a good seed. And so this is, he's talking to these people, but he's also talking to other levels that we want to explore. So this is uh, Matthew 13, 37. He said, he answered and said to them, he that sows the good seed is the son of man. Oh, I got to jump back over here. That's the, uh, it actually starts over here in 24. Another parable he put forth to them saying, the kingdom of heaven is like a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while the men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares amongst the wheat. So if he sowed wheat, that was the truth. If he sowed tares, those are lies, right? There's only two seeds, truth and lie. And, and so while the ble uh, and and so while the, the enemy came and sowed wheat and then when he went he went his way and when the blade was spun up and brought forth fruit then appeared the tares also so in the beginning it just looked like wheat but when the fruit came ah uh, no it was not that there's no there's no fruit there there was none it was just a weed there was no there was no uh, harvest of the wheat so the servant of the household came and said sir did you not sow good field in in thy field good good seed in your field so whence came these tares? And the enemy said, and he said to them, the enemy has done this. The servant said to him, will you want us to go and gather them up? And he said, no, lest they, you gather up the tares, you also could root, root up some wheat, the precious. Don't, don't mess with it. He said, let them both grow together until the harvest. Both grow, what truth and lies is going to kind of be in the same field until the harvest at the time of the harvest, I will save the reapers. Gather you up first the tares, first the tares, first the tares. First, he's going to remove the bad. He's going to first remove the bad and then bind them in bur uh, bundles to burn them. But then gather the wheat into my barn. Okay, then he goes over here and, and, then, and then in the, the um, let's go over here, 34, and he tells who he's talking to. He says, and all these things Jesus spoke to the multitudes in parables. And without a parable, he did not speak to them. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. So now you're going to see, I said, remember I said that this is about, at this point, at one level, it's about the, actually the Jews in, the, in the, the Hebrews. He said, it might be fulfilled, which was spoken, spoken by the prophet, saying, I'll open my mouth in parables, and I'll utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. Wow. 
Then Jesus sent the multitude away, and he went in the house, and his disciples came to him, saying, Declare to us the parable of the tares of the field. And I've discovered there's several places in here that he just speaks to his disciples personally. And he tells us, before that, he said, it's because it's given to you. You have ears. Blessed are you. I'm speaking to you because you're gonna. You're one of those good seed. You're one of my remnant I'm going to put in. He said, so, but others don't even get it. He goes, so he, he said, I'm declaring you the parable before the founders of the earth. He said, 37, this is 13, 37. He that answers sin to them, he that sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. And the good seed are the children of the kingdom. And the tares are the kingdom, are the... The tares are the children of the evil one, or the wicked one. Now, it's interesting, earlier in this chapter, when he's talking about the parable of the four grounds, the ground was not the world there, we knew. The ground is the heart. It's individual. So these things can be looked at at a micro picture and a, a, a micro picture. So at that parable, the ground was us. It was the ground of a man who has a hard heart, contaminated heart, and like that. But he said, now I'm going to use it in a different picture that actually the whole world is my ground. Okay, he goes, but the, in this point, the seed is the seed of the children of the kingdom or the children are those that's come out of the seed of the wicked one. The enemy that sows is, is, the, is the devil or the adversary, uh, the accuser. The harvest is the end of this, of this world or the world. And we know that world, that word there is eon, it's the end of the age. It was the end of the old covenant. It was the end of Judaism, and it was gonna. He's gonna give them a generation before he said the end. Daniel talked about the end of the daily sacrifice in the temple. Everything was gonna end, and that's what happened in seventy A.D. There was no temple to do that daily sacrifice. Uh, so the enemy of the Sodom is the devil, and the harvest of the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. Okay, it's spirits, it's angels, and there at and here therefore that the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, and so shall it be in the end of this world, this covenant. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity are those that produce sinful, evil things. And that word, I don't think them is even in the, the original, but it's saying the things that offend, he's going to come in and take those things that are offensive, are those things, those injurious seeds that look like wheat, but they're tares. And he says, and those that produce or do iniquity. And you'll cast them into a furnace. There's that word furnace again. The same word he used but before to these same people. The G Egypt was the furnace of fire. It was a persecution. So when I hear furnace of fire, I hear persecution. I hear slavery. I hear uh, suffering. He said, and there will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. They knew this picture. They already knew what that word meant to them. And then the righteous shall shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears, let him hear. And so this is a powerful, powerful uh, parable, and you can see it in different levels, whether it would be the ground or it would be the people. And we know at that point he was getting ready, and there's so many scriptures I can't get to, to bring a harvest out of the first covenant. And he said, if, if he had not have left us a seed, he said, if God hadn't left us a seed, he said, um, if Israel is a seed, he goes, she would have come like Solomon Gomorrah. She'd be like that forever. It's eternal burning. That means there's no end to that. It's not happening anymore. It's over. It's over. And so um, he said, it be, but, it, but he said, I'm going to gather out a seed and I'm going to put it in my, in my uh, barn. What do you put seed in a barn? Well, there's two things. First of all, you could have, you could plant a garden and have a bunch of corn in it and you could eat all the corn. You eat it. It's good. I love corn. I love corn on the cob. Uh, and so you can eat your corn. But if you're smart and you're a farmer, you don't eat all the corn. In fact, what you do, you take the best seed, the best of the corn, and you put it back for, for the next to harvest, to plant, right? And he said, um, all these parables, I love them. But he said, if you, if you sow bountifully, you're going to reap bountifully. If you reap sparingly, you're going to reap sparingly. Okay, that's just a harvest. That's just a law of the harvest. And there's been people use that, uh, manipulating people with money uh, to try to say, well, come in here and you you you, know, you sow the seed today and you give this much money, you're gonna kids are gonna come home or you're gonna pay, get a new house or you know that is manipulation of the, the of a truth. But don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. That's a law of the harvest. The more you sow, the more you reap. And you reap what you sow. So if you're out here reaping, reaping wild oats, you're gonna reap. You're gonna get wild oats. If you're out here reaping tares, you're gonna reap tares. You're gonna. If you're reaping, sowing good, you receive good. This is not even a, a 
it's not even a spiritual thing. It's a natural concept from Genesis. It's the, he said it's going to continue seed time and harvest till the end of the earth. And you use that principle in many ways. We know this, this works. But let's go back to burning of the field. Let's go back and what he's saying here on the burning of the field. A tear. I'm gonna, I don't have that much time, to, but I'm, I'm going to try to go to some of the most important part of this um, is the tares. How do you know you have tares in your field? Because you see what they produce. Or you see what they don't produce. They don't have any fruit. In fact, all you see is the works of the flesh. That's all it is. You get what you get. You just get what you get. You're, you're, it's the works. Okay, let me just tell you. Let me read what the Bible says about that. I'll read out of, I'll, I'll read the, the Living Bible, I think it is here, first of all. He said, uh, but when you follow your own indications of your deception, what's in your head, what you want to do out of your field, your lives will produce evil results. Or these are the symptoms you'll see that you are coming out of your own field. Impure thoughts, eagerness of lustful pleasure, idolatry, hatred, fighting, jealousy, fits of anger, consistent effort, constant effort to get your best for yourself, complaining, criticizing, the feeling everybody else is wrong except those uh, in your group. You think you're always right. Envy, murder, drunkenness, or addictions, wild parties, and all that do that sort of, and those sorts of things. The Amplified says the doings or the practices of the flesh are obvious. Immorality, impurity, indecency, uh, idolatry, sorcery, intimacy, in, intimacy, and I can't say the word, strife, jealousy, anger, ill-temperedness, uh, selfishness, divisions, uh, envy, drunkenness, carousing. I warn you beforehand, like I've done previously, those that do things do not inherit the kingdom of God. Well, what does that mean? What's well, the kingdom of God? He tells us another scripture. He said, the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, joy, and the Holy Ghost. So we thought, well, you do those things, you're going to go to hell and not go to heaven. That's not what he's saying. Oh, you're going to be in some hell, all right. But what he's saying is, he goes, you don't inherit the kingdom. You're going to miss out. You don't get the things that of the spirit in that from that field. You only get these things. He said, but if you're coming from the fruit or the spirit of the Lord or the seed that the Lord has given you, not the seed of the enemy, the lies of the enemy that's going to produce those things out of your flesh. He said, but if you are going to walk into the spirit, this is what you get. This is the fruit you get, right? What did he say? The kingdom, you get the fruit. It's righteous, peace, joy, and the Holy Ghost. Uh, here he says that fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. And that's that being evil. Uh, it's not just self-control. It's being even killed. It's it's not up and down and all over the place with your emotions that the kids don't know what kind of mama they're going to get today. Um, and so he says that, that they that are Christ have crucified the flesh. That old field, they burnt the flesh. They burnt the field with its, uh, with its affections and its desires. But if we live in the spirit, let us walk in the spirit. And if we do that, we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. We won't have a field full of tears. We won't be getting things. And I want to tell you one of the things that I saw something that jumped out at me that's big. That's big today. I've never heard this, but I know it's, I'm not probably the only person that's got this. But I realized something with this word thistles and thorns. And I did not even realize it was in the Bible so much. Because it, I, I talked about... Um, he says uh, the burning of the field. What was it happened in that field that had the bad seed? It said it come up and choked them out. It was it was it was sown seed into that ground that had thorns and thistles. It had things that would choke you out. Well, I thought about that whole word about it jumped out of me about thorns, and I, I realized in the garden when Adam was took out the garden, Adam and Eve, and he starts giving them the consequences, telling them what's going to happen now that the dying had started. He said that um, the ground, he said the ground was cursed. He didn't say cursed man. He didn't curse. He cursed the enemy, which was Satan, and he cursed the ground. And um, they, Adam and Eve cursed themselves. They caused their own consequences. Y'all don't curse people. We curse ourselves. That's the, that's the problem. We start our own wildfires. But immediately it said, out of the ground grew 
thorns and thistles. And he said, now you're going to have to work by the sweat of your brow. You're going to have to dig your own trees, your, your own ground. And they were in a garden where they didn't have to do anything, but just, you know, take care of what God already put there. They had the trees. They had the fruit. It was all there. But now, now they're left on their own. Now they're going to have to dig in the fields. Now they become flesh. This is all means many things, different levels. But now in the flesh, there grew up thorns and thistles. In their world, thorns and thistles. I realized the first evil because the word evil, you know, good and evil, evil just means harmful. If you want to really look at it, it's harmful. It's what's harmful. The first thing to harm God's creation was thorns and thistles. That's a record of. Thorns. I was reminded immediately. He said they, Mark 15, 17, they put a purple robe on him. They twisted together a crown of thorns, a crown of thorns, and set it on him. The first thing to heart hurt God's beloved creation was put on his head and beat down in his head with rods. He took it all. Jesus took it all because he loves us so much. This word thorns. I could do a whole lesson on it, but I'm just going to quickly tell you this to get your mind on here. I found it all through the Bible. I, I mean, there's a bunch of them. I just picked out four here. New, numbers 33 and 55. If you do not drive out the inhabitants of the land, those you allow to remain will become barbs in your eyes and thorn in your sides. And they will give you trouble in the land where you live. If we don't get rid of the enemy... If you don't burn your field, if you don't get the lies of the father of lies out of your mind and out of your life. He told them this was a natural thing, but he's saying here, he said, those you allow to remain will become barbs in your eyes and thorns in your sides. They'll give you trouble in the land which you live. It's the tears that's tearing us up. It's the lies I have that Satan has bound me with and strongholds in my mind. I need the fire. I need the light to bring out the truth so I can quit producing the works of the flesh. I can quit being angry and, and temperamental and bitter and, and live in according to the lust of my flesh. It continually bring me even into things of addictions, lead me into sexual immorality, bring me into things that destroys my families, my relationships, my children, my, my reputation, my health. You don't drive it out. They're going to give you trouble in the land where you live. 2 Samuel 23 and 6, he said, But evil men are to be cast aside like thorns, which are not gathered with the hand. They're to be gathered. There's things that's to be gathered. I rem I'm reminded this whole thing. He said, There'll be thorns in your sides. I'm reminded of Paul, Apostle Paul. He prayed three times the Lord to remove a thorn out of his side. And finally the Lord said, look, no, I'm not removing that. I'm going to leave that because it, you need it. It's going to keep you humble. Paul, you have a pride problem. You have something. I'm giving you all this. And if I don't watch it, you're going to have this. I'm going to leave this. I'm going to leave this right here. This fire is going to have to continue with you till it burns out. That Whatever else has caused you said to become puffed up or caused you to, to, to let your old pride jump up. Thorn in the flesh. People think it's different things. I personally think it's the people that was after him. Just like it said here, these people uh, will be thorns. Um, it's funny one time I had a lady that it just wrote me off. And I was like, oh, thank you, Lord, for moving that thorn out of my side. And when I said that, I was like, whoa, that's probably what Paul had. Somebody was causing him problems. Um, so people can be thorns in your side that he said remove. And it's, you know, you know what I'm saying? Ooh, let me just jump on for that one. Jeremiah 4, 3. He said, this is the, what the, what. This is what the Lord says. This is the word. This is the wheat to the people of Judah and Jerusalem. Break up your unplowed ground and do not sow among thorns. And we're going to talk about the ground later on in another message. Hebrews 6, 7, 8. Paul's talking here. He said, land, land that drinks in the rain uh, that produces a crop useful to them who the farm, farmer receives a blessing of God. If it's, it's fruitful ground, it's got rain, it's been, it's been plowed. He said, but the land that produces thorns and thistles is worthless and is danger of being cursed. In the end, it'll be burned. 
So he's saying, and when you have land, that heart land that we talked about in the four parable, he said, it's in danger of being burned. And so I'm, I'm reminded of the scripture. He said, it's a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the living God. In another place, he said, our God is a consuming fire. The question is, what is it consuming? Is it going to consume people? Is this about him being some uh, God that wants to, you know, torture people forever and ever? Um, or is this a God that loves his people enough to send the fire, to send the light uh, to the point where I don't know when this happens before death, after death, somewhere along the line, the Bible tells us, Old Testament, New Testament, he tells us that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he's Lord. And it takes light to be able to see and understand and to receive them, to get rid of the lies about who he is and who he isn't. We have a world right now that's been fed lies about God and who he is and what Christianity is. And then the church fueled the flames. So I today, I hope that this message has been as good for you as it has for me, because this is a, a very big deal about removing the tares. Um, I put here, and, and I'm saying from Brother Jimmy again, at the end of the harvest, we burned our fields to remove the tares. It was not to destroy the good. It was to prove the bad. It was, to, it was to get rid of those things that would come in the hindrance of the next harvest. I know God is, this is a generational thing. And many things in our lives we put up with that it's going to destroy the next generation. They can't even come up and be what they are. They can't even receive your seed because you have so much in you that's been polluted. It's a contaminated mind that all of us have. That this process is a, the saving of the soul. Our spirits have already been saved. Our body is is going to be saved or delivered the word saved means delivered and it, it's going to be delivered but right now we're in the saving of the soul process it's the mind being renewed it's a continual thing of burning my feels it's a continual thing of saving of the soul the mind the will of emotion that's where people get confused about the salvation thing salvation is not talking about always that after that life after death it's talking about now it's saving of the soul the mind the will the emotion from the tears and the life that's destroying us, that's causing us to have enemies in our own territory, that we're destroying ourselves being our own enemy, and all the devil can do is to lie to me and try to put lies that I have to pull out my sword of the word, the right word, the truth of the word, and cut that head off and go, get behind me, Satan. That is a lie, and I am... Thank you, Jesus, for putting the light on that. So now the light burns up those tears. It burns it up. That was the whole reason for it, is to burn it in the fire. It was destroy the light. It destroy those things that bring iniquity. And at that point, there was an actual physical people that were going to go through 70 AD. And I'm going to tell you this, that the, those people you were talking to, they had been in a furnace of fire for a long time. The, the Jewish people, the Hebrew people that were God's chosen, they said, let his crucifixion be on us and our children. And have we seen that who was it that Hitler persecuted what happened in 70 AD when they were all the, the Jerusalem was destroyed and the Jews were horribly killed and those who were not killed were led into the furnace of fire of being under slavery under the Pharaohs and working for years by thousands hundreds of thousands and we've watched those sweet people that inherited their forefathers uh, 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 their, their things that's happened to them we saw the persecution of these people but it's not to destroy the Jews. In fact, he said they'll be delivered. I don't know what all that means, but he said, I will finish what I start. Even if you have to go through the fire, even if you go through the furnace, furnace 400 years, Egypt, 400 years, you had to go in there to multiply. It took you that long to finally say, I will trust the Lord. And now my cries have come out before him. And he said a deliverer. That's what he did. Jesus became their Moses. But he wasn't delivering them from Rome. He was delivering them from the lies that had been passed down, the bad shepherds. But now he was harvesting them. And out of those sweet people, he made a harvest. Then on the day of Pentecost, there was 120 seeds right there that reproduced that first day to 3,000, then 5,000, then thousands of people, millions of people have come to the understanding of see the good seed of the good father that's produced in the day and but we still have even though we've been so sowed some good seeds is a child there's bad seeds been sown in us he's trying to purify the 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 weed the weed the thorns that's causing me pain and rid me of that so i could be productive because the glory of the lord is going to cover the earth i love you guys for meet again in jesus name